we are. We're live. Right. We are the mad scientists. I'm Mad Frankie. This is Violet Igor over here. And together we make the mad scientists. There we go. Not too bad. Not too Not bad. bad at all. Okay. I'm off. I'm okay. muted. Well, I've got my palette from there. Trying to keep the water out of the way and that button out of the way, my mouse. Don't need it right now. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I've got some things to show you. I've, I've been prepping for this. This is artboard. See, watercolour artboard. And I've put gesso on here. Not gesso, I beg your pardon, not gesso, crackle paste. And I've left some gaps here and there, and it's cracked quite nicely. So that's good. And then I've got another one because I'm trying three different methods. This one is uh, um, not art board, but art block, art paper block. And this is Bockingford Block, St. Cuthbert's Mill, right? So that's the Bockingford one. And it's <clears throat> got a little bit of cracking here and there, but quite often you find that there's finer cracking you can't see so well until you put colour on. So I can see some here, some here, some here, some here little bit here but I can't see hardly anything in here but a tiny bit here so possibly that will show up better with stuff but this one's got gesso on it first before putting these on right so that's a different idea and this one's also got gesso on it and then I used the masking fluid on there and I, I was awake quite a lot last night so I did a few more so <laughs> anyway but that's got gesso on first as well this one has no gesso so let's have a look at this one. I wanted to use the colours, some of these, because there's some nice bright autumn-y sort of colours. And I'm thinking decayed leaf because I've got gaps here and there where the leaf has been attacked by various things in the environment. <clears throat> so I've got that. I wonder if I can snug that in there. Might just be able to. I've also got some mediums here. That would be nice to try out. Uh, we know about the granulation medium, we've used that before, but we can always have another go. We've also got ox gall liquid, which increases wetting and flow, so that's the sort of the opposite to the granulation medium. Then there's lifting preparation, which strictly speaking you should be putting down first because it makes it easier to lift colour off. So I won't be using that one. Then I've got watercolour texture medium. Never tried that before. No idea what it's going to do. Could be interesting. Could be disastrous. And there's another one around the back here. Uh, blending medium. Slows drying to allow blending. Gum Arabic, which is also used as a medium. And last but not least, iridescent medium, which could be quite fun. So we're going to use some colours on these. And I've shown you these. I've also got the other palettes here, like the Roman Schmoll, some more Roman Schmolls in this one, and the Schminky. I don't think I'll be using the Schminky. As I was saying before, when I'm thinking about it, I then forgot to finish. Um, one of the things I saw while I was sort of floating about last night looking at this, that and the other. <clears throat> was it last night? It was a couple of days ago. Anyway, recently, somebody said that the best way to do loose colour or to make it easier to do loose watercolour is to use bigger brushes. And as I was saying to Violet, he showed one guy using a brush that was um, quite big. Maybe on that sort of range of big. But, of course, he was using a massive, great big canvas, about sort of at least the size of my um, piece of wood that holds the uh, camera track and everything. And I can't get a piece in there that big. I could probably get a canvas in, but not quite that big. So that's something for another time. But in the meantime, brushes, big brushes. So I've got some big brushes here. There's a problem, though with me using big brushes with watercolours because these are my biggest watercolour pans, these. 
and you can see that it's going to be the devil of a job to get that in there. You, it's just not going to happen. Not with any ease. It might work okay with that one, which is big. So we might try a bit with that. But I think that one, even though when you wet it, it's going to go more to a point. How much it's going to go to a point, well, we'll have to wait and see. I can try it. I can put it in the water and see what happens. Let's have a look. It might be um, more messy than anything. Well, we don't know. Just got to be a rule that. We'll be a scientist. Yeah, exactly. Let's have a try. Oops. Well, that wasn't very clever. Excuse me. I've now got to dry up. <laughs> but yes, you do get a better point when it's wet. Yeah. So there's that. I thought it might because it's been a long time since I used these. So we can use that one for sure. And um, possibly this one as would do similar. So I we know. could get some colour off there, and we can probably get some colour out of a um, dish like that. But you're going to have to put some in there first. So let's start with that. So we want autumn colours. Fine. Okay, autumn colours. Let me just get some colours out because this is so big and bulky. This huge thing. I'm knocking the water over every time I move it. So, what have we got? So, let me get the thing out. It does tell me some things that just looking at the colour doesn't. We've got rose mother deep. Mm -hmm. Which palette is this? Come on. This is um, this big one. This one. Is I don't know what they call it. No, it's, it's not the Art Deco. No, that's much smaller. The Art Deco is about that size. Yeah. Half the size. So it's double the size of that. But we don't want many of these. We want these. At least that's what I'm thinking. I might use some browns. Or, well, I probably would use that, which is purple. And I really like the maroon over the other side. So I'll probably use those two. We'll get those out and pop them down there. If you wanted to use any of your graphite, you could. I think they're a little dark. I want bright really colors dark. for this. Yeah, I would I would go with a, a or, an orangish yeah, a dark orange like burnt sienna or something like that. I think I'll have the carmine. Actually, the carmine is a nice red, but it's got some some bluish tone to it. Unlike the cadmium scarlet but we'll leave those i mean i've got the i'll have it over the side here it just won't be quite so accessible as having these out so we want some greens well i certainly want the malachite because i just love it so i can't help myself i've got to get that one out if i can malachite i like the viridian but the uh, lime green is it's a little dirtier than i like that's of the viridian That's not the Viridian. Yes, it is. Of course it is. It says so there. <laughs> Viridian, gone. Good. So, and um, what's this one? This one is... Turquoise blue, we'll have that. That's uh, cobalt violet. Cobalt violet. Yes, I like the cobalt violet, and I like the imperial violet as well. So I'll get that out. And I'll get the lime green out, and I'll get the lemon yellow out. There we are. I think that's enough for now. It's probably too much. Probably won't use them all. But this one is that one. So, sorry, you can't see. This one, this pan, is this one. So I've already got some in there. Fine, fine, fine. Right, I'm going to move these out of the way because I'm not going to use them at the moment. I may do later, but not right now. I've also got some alcohol here that I can drop in if I want to. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put colours on and then drop things in when it's uh, completely wet, when it's just damp etc etc we'll have a little play and see what we can have happen we just want to see what effect we get 
with the different surfaces I've prepared down here. Well, this one's not really that prepared. It's just the board. And that's the point. So we've got a sort of base to go from. So in the background, we want sort of, um, I think we want some purples. So what's this one? This one is um, 139. 139 is the cobalt violet. So this one is a little bit pinker than the imperial violet. Oh, lost a hair. So water first. What am I doing? Water first. So we've got the big brush. Water. So we're going to keep, we're going to remember this because this is a process video. Wet yeah. on wet. Yes, because we want it to flood about. Right. Yes, I've got quite a bit of wet on there. I can see the glisten on the board. So I want a little bit going in there. Want a little bit in the centre of that and that and in there. Otherwise, it's all going around the outsides. But it's easier, I think, with using crackle paste to keep things to the sides rather than rather than flooding over the area you've only drawn. You know what I mean? So let's see. And there's a hair. This, these brushes shed quite well. <laughs> well, that doesn't uh, denote quality. Well, I mean, I bought these a long time ago. They're Chinese brushes, but they were, then they were bought in a roll but and in a tin, so they seem to look quite good quality, but uh, maybe it's just because they're new. Let's give them a chance. So I've got a fair bit of colour there. This is a lovely color. It's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Not a bit of tissue. Let me get a big piece. I've got this big roll of bounty. Sorry, plenty. Plenty. I can't distinguish these two. It's a big roll, so if I, I find if I get rid of most of the colour that I can like that and like that, I don't get the water quite so dirty quite so quickly, even if I go in then and rinse it. That's why I like a secondary uh, piece of paper or secondary uh, paper water to bottle. Yeah. To, but you don't have room for that, so it's okay. I've got a second jar of water, though. So I can rinse again in there and be sure it's clearer. <clears throat> I think a bit of the malachite. Because I don't think the malachite is a colour that is going to fit in any of these leaves particularly well. Well, not if I want to keep to the, well, I don't have to keep to the normal colours at all, do I? No, this is your world. I'm trying to get hairs out now. At least to the edge of the paper. <clears throat> See, I don't mind too much if it goes over the edges because that's a definition, one of the definitions of loose watercolour, thing of going over the edges.
so let me get a little bit of the Viridian. <clears throat> right now I want a bit of that lime green rinsing in the clean let's have a go with lime Now let's turn this round so that I can see what I'm doing a bit more closely. Have you noticed down here how some of the cracks are now showing with some of the paint near the edge of the leaf? Now, I, I could see those before because this was the one with the better cracks. But uh, it's showing them up beautifully. Also want to throw some red into some of the purple. <clears throat> yeah, quite happy with that at the moment. <clears throat> I like that. I like that little bleed over at the top left where the malachite. Yeah, that little yeah. area there where they bled together. It's kind of a nice mix of color. Adding a little more of that there just to help it tie this in. You don't want one blob of one color. Not unless you've got black and white everywhere and you're just putting a blob of red in. So that becomes a focal point. 72. That's the one I wanted. We got maroon. Right. I wanted to add some maroon into the coming loose, into the purple. That one wet it. Let it blend in a bit better. That's better. <clears throat> you do that with a brush you're not using very much at the moment. Don't forget to wipe it and clean it before you put it back. Otherwise, you can pick it up and intend to add some water and end up adding the funny colour. <clears throat> yes, I know. I, I've blended that out now. Yes, I know.
No judgment from me. It will flow where it will because it's bendy. Because it is, after all, only board. It's not on a block. It's a pity the board isn't on a block. <clears throat> <laughs> okay now then i want some let me go back to the box yellow ochre those are the two i want this is an oak leaf right So, oaky sort of colours. <clears throat> and I want a bit of maroon in there as well. Oh dear, my big hair, don't want that. I deliberately used a palette knife to make these veins so that they are actually dug into it. So they make little troughs. I don't think I need the burnt sienna as well, but I might put some in the other leaf. Yeah, in this big one here. So that one's got some brownie colours in it, so I'm sure. This is not so loose, is it? Trying to avoid going over the shape. Ah, uh, there we go. Well, I mean, it runs off anyway, so that helps it to be looser. Well, you know, I pay attention when, when Pete teaches. I get uh, quite absorbed. I, I actually get over-focused because I, sometimes I miss what she says after what she says. <laughs> yes, but, I know. I do that, yeah. Yeah, I get focused on something she said and then I don't hear the rest Yeah, of I start it. thinking about that and then she's sort of five minutes down the road and I'm going, what? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, she has that effect on me. Bless her, I, I love her as a teacher. I wish we had an uh, in-person class, but then I'd probably be interrupting all the time or, or not paying attention <laughs> and I'd be in the corner. <laughs> anyway, getting back to it, she was... Uh, doing leaves the other day and i even left him a comment about it to uh highlight in the valleys um she she made her leaves and she came back with her pencils and went into the valleys you put the darker color in the valleys yeah well that's what i've tried to do there yeah well but she that used, will go better when it's not so wet right she used um um she she had that but she came back after the fact um, and used, I forget, she used her pencils, I believe, and went into the vat or her marker, I forget which. See, that's where I stopped paying attention. Um, yeah. And she went back over it to uh, to highlight those valleys. It's like, then I saw the change. Like, keep that in mind. So I actually put it in my comment. Yes, darkest color in the valley. So I would, if I write it down, sometimes I don't forget for a while. <laughs> and then another thing I've learned with watercolor is sometimes, yes, you do have to wait in between layers to let okay. things dry. Wet on wet is, doesn't always give you the effect you want. Sometimes you want wet on dry when, you, when you're when going in layers. 
so you have less bleed. And of course, when you're working on crackle paste, it absorbs. You can see that. I mean, I've just put that on there. It's already gone pink. <clears throat> the stronger I want that color, the more I'm going to have to wait for it to dry and come back again. This is the cad yellow, I think, isn't it? Yes, cad yellow. These are not, this is not a palette that I'm used to seeing from you. I, yeah, you, yeah. Said, you said darker, but this is so colorful and beautiful. That's what I meant it to be. I mean, autumn oh. leaves, I was thinking. It, it doesn't come across as autumn leaves. It comes across as... Psychedelic leaves? <laughs> oh, maybe. That's a good word. It's still, it's beautiful, Fran. Good. Good, good. Still want a bit more of this in there, though. Not one of them hairs. This is just I really like that. Yeah, it's it's wonderfully beautiful. Look what you've done. It's so cool. Are you seeing mm. much effect on the on the gesso? Are you seeing anything no Lo loads of cracks? Lovely. Now <clears throat> so the watercolor is, is uh doing well on there. Oh yeah. Let me it ask fades you. though, so gonna have to come back when it's dry and go over it again with deeper colour or another dose of the same colour uh, damp on dry instead of on wet. Okay, so can I ask, can you explain how you created those crackles with gesso? It wasn't with gesso, it was crackle paste. Oh, this is the crackle paste, okay. Yeah. The white okay. leaves are a crackle paste on both of them, right? On the, oh dear, look at this. I'm not keen on that. Yeah, you, you're off camera too. No, it's, it's right here. Okay. Do your thing. There we go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Can't remember. Let me know if you do. About the crackle paste. Oh, crackle paste, yes. I use crackle paste on two pieces, this one and the one on which I put gesso down on the paper first. Okay, you're off camera a bit, just so you know. Thank you. So the crackle paste is, is taking the watercolor well too, but the end result, the dried end result is what we'll know. Uh-huh. Okay. I love your colors. Oh. I would keep and frame this just as it is. 
Well, it won't stay like this, you see. It will go lighter. That's the trouble with watercolours. They go lighter. Now, if you did it with acrylics, you'd keep the colour, the, the intensity of the colour. So another tissue. And spotted a big fat hair. So that can just sit and dry now And we'll come back and go over the leaves again I probably won't go Well I don't know There's a bit of sort of funniness going on there I think it's not just the leaves It's your choice of, of uh, surround colours That really make those leaves pop Yeah Good job Right, I think, as I said, we'll leave that now. I'm quite happy with all the rest. So we'll leave that and see what happens. we got to do this correctly. We're going to go. That's enough. We're going to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 We've done for now. We'll be back with part two.